Hello folks, my name is Alfred. I am continuing to make Clockwork Empires videos. Uh, the occasion for this one was the release of version 34, which is uh, the latest in Gasland Games' monthly sort of public pushes. Uh, in between official patches, so versions 32, 33, 34, there are experimental builds, like 32A, 32B, uh, up to whenever they release the next version, in which they test out the new stuff that they'll be um, and tweaks and things that they're going to be putting in the next version um, before it goes live, and you have to opt in to the experimental version, which is auto updated through Steam and you know it's just all pretty cool. But the experimental versions are a bit—they're experimental, right? So uh, oftentimes, like stuff breaks. Uh, so only opt into those if you want to see the cool new stuff a little bit sooner, but also want to help report it when it's broken. Uh, that said, I'm going to fire up a new game in um, the good old new Antipodia colony, and we can check out some of the new stuff. There is a ton of new stuff. And while my computer slowly generates the world, uh, maybe we can go over some of it. I don't need to read. Readings for dummies. Oh, this is this is quite the starting zone. Uh, should be fine, I think. They can easily walk. Oh, they can, clearly, they can get off this very shallow plateau. All right. Um, so, as usual, we're going to start with the word working. Now, a complaint I've heard people uh, put forth uh, uh, semi-regularly is that this game looks a little bit like uh, Farmville. Because you've got your like, QB buildings and then your QB farm plots. Uh, you know, not a slight against the game that so, clearly so many millions of people enjoy. Um, but, you know, this game does not have to look rectangular. Right? See this? I built a funny L-shaped building just for the heck of it. I'm going to put in a power saw instead of two work... Damn it. I'm going to put in a power saw instead of two workbenches. Uh, just because I feel like it. I'm going to jam in a couple of beds. I'm sure they're going to love sleeping next to the whirring power saw. Uh, so one of the cool new things about this version is that uh, naturalists have been revamped. I mean, I their function previously was to explore these like black-covered fog of war areas, um, which is you know cool in and of itself. But they wouldn't do it on their own. So you'd have to go to the command menu here, click explore, and then like plunk down an explore beacon or two, and then the explorer would gradually get to each one in turn. Um, but as you can see, this guy is talking all of them, and as he gets to them, they disappear. Uh, so now you can just click down a whole bunch of stuff and leave him to do it autonomously. If you don't specify explore points, he will actually just explore on his own, which is not something they did before, which is very cool. They have additional functionality as well. Uh, but first, let me... Uh... See, look at that. Nice complex looking building. Doesn't look like a shoebox. Uh, anyway. Explore, uh, the additional functionality functionality of explorers is now they will, uh, I should stop calling them explorers, naturalists, is now that they will do things like um, they will reveal, they will discover things. So occasionally they will investigate clumps of grass and they'll reveal a mysterious artifact, like a fishy idol or a mysterious object that is related to occult and eldritch powers. Right? And you wouldn't find those without the naturalist. He will also occasionally discover that boulders are actually hematite nodes or other resource nodes, which is also very cool. Again, without the aid of a naturalist, um, your stupid colonists would just be hitting rocks, like, blindly. 
Uh, so we'll wait for this uh, workshop to get complete. I'm a little bit concerned about the lack of trees. Actually, there's some trees over here. Uh, so, for those of you who are new to uh, the videos I make, I guess, Clockwork Empires is a colony building simulation game. It's it's actually in pre... It's not even beta yet. It's like in whatever. I, I guess it's in alpha, I guess you could say. But it's available through Steam via early access. Um, but clearly it's not done. There's going to be stuff that's broken, stuff that's missing, uh, weird bugs, crashes. Oh, good. Trees. Um, that's kind of the nature of it. But people, I feel people, I read comments all the time from people saying, this game looks really cool, but it's in early alpha, or early access, and I'm not sure. Um, I get a feeling they're wondering, A, if it's fun to play, and B, if it's, you know, functional enough to be worth the purchase. Um, so I think people, uh, I hope people enjoy these videos. Maybe uh, you can just check on them every now and again and see if it, the game is in, you know, if it's something you want to play or and, and or in playable shape. All right, so I've built the sawmill, which turns, well, you can see here. These trees have been chopped down into logs, which my settlers will eventually haul back to the stockpile. And then when I sign a team here, to the carpentry workshop, I can turn raw logs into planks. I'm going to say I want this colony always to have six planks. There's a standing order for six planks. So if the workers in here ever notice that there are fewer the fewer planks than there should be, they will grab some logs and make some. Great. These are the current work divisions. You have workers and assigned under different overseers. Amusing names. The red coats down here are my military. Uh, everyone can kind of fight, although not very well. Your colonists will hit things with their mining picks and things. But these guys can use the piskets, piskets, pistols and muskets and other assorted firearms on the uh, on uh, the strange new denizens of the uh, colony of New Antipodia. All right, so now that we have a source of processed wood, I think our next priority will be to be to build a kitchen. Again, I could leave it like this, but it's rectangular and boring. There we go. And I mean, I, I'm not making them these weird arbitrary shapes. Okay, I am making them these weird arbitrary shapes just for the fun of it. But on a strategic level, you can also make them that way to get around, like... Uh, unfavorable terrain where you have to like bend around a corner bend around like a cliff face or something or you know you just don't have enough space all right let's put in all the necessary it's very important that a building have doors and in particular it's very important that the kitchen has doors because there will be people constantly streaming in and out of it carrying either raw food in to be cooked or cooked food out. And I'm going to drop a bed in here too. Uh, actually, I don't have any uh, don't have any stone with which to build those stone ovens. Hmm. This clump of grass has to go. What I like to do is, uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, is to separate stockpiles um, in just for ease of, uh, just so I can see sort of resource availability at a glance. So this stockpile, I've turned off everything but food. And on this one, I will turn off food, but leave everything else. So food gets stuck just in this one stockpile, and I can see at a glance how much I have, and whether or not my colony is starving. Oh. 
don't want to overload my colonists with work yet. Actually, they could... Uh, they could definitely... handle more jobs. Um, we're a little bit short on food, though. We don't have a lot of forageables. Here's some black mushrooms. Ooh, they're culty whisperings. So in the interest of showing you the new stuff, some of which is cult-related, I am not going to relentlessly hunt down and shoot suspected cult members. Um, and this is because one of the new cool new things they added with Patch 34 was the Fishman transformation. Uh, under certain circumstances, it is possible for colonists who discover mysterious artifacts as revealed by the naturalist to, um, to become Fishmen. Now, it's not something I've personally seen yet. I've played only a little bit prior to starting this video. Um, so I'm hoping to see it, and I'm hoping having a high, uh, a very culty town will help facilitate that. Oh, I see something in the roof. Uh, well, something in the algorithm that generates the roof is broken. It's probably something to do with these uh, very intricate corners. So there was a downside to not making all your buildings just boring rectilinear shapes. We'll just say it's a skylight. Anyway, I, I generally play the roofs off so I can see people doing their stuff inside the buildings. Uh, sometimes that's pretty important. Yeah, all right, I think we're doing okay for wood. I'm a little concerned nobody's made any planks yet because we definitely need planks. Next order of business is to build some beds so the colonists don't go crazy from uh, sleep deprivation. This is Steel Mud Hook. Why aren't any of you making planks? Oh, they're probably all hauling. Hauling stuff. Alright. Alright, here's the lower class house. I could technically just continue... Oh, here's a new thing. See this bottom right? Here's, here's the Call Favor button. So Call Favor, you can call in favor every now and then. I believe it's once every other day. Uh, and you get this menu, the call in a favor menu. You can spend prestige, which is the star value up at the top, for these different things, right? Skilled artisan is essentially another overseer, so another squad. Extra criminals is three random dudes who all have the uh, criminal element background. Well, it's kind of like Australia was the dumping ground for British criminals, right? Um, building materials, if you have enough prestige to afford these great out ones, building materials is like bricks and planks. Uh, you can get another naturalist. You can get a squad of redcoats. That requires a lot of prestige. I don't actually want any extra criminals, <laughs> so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna not take them. And look, we have the immigration event. I can get three random dudes who are not necessarily criminals, and I also get one prestige out of it, so I'm gonna do that. The other option was to get another overseer or just ignore it entirely. Let's take a look. Okay, so uh, let's organize you into my work crews here. I realize I'm going a bit fast for what might be an introductory video for some. I mean, I've spent a lot more time on the sort of tutorial sort of basics in earlier videos. Um, so if, if something escapes you, uh, there are other videos out there as well by other authors. Uh, you can feel free to check those out. Um, I'll try to explain what I'm doing. Also, um, Gaslamp Games has an official wiki. I would encourage you guys to check it out. If, for instance, you're wondering, what exactly is a production chain required for me to make pumpkin pie? Or, uh, fertilizer? Or how do I investigate a mysterious artifact? Things like that. Production chains and supply chains. Or, what exactly are these armored men who are shooting my colonists and robbing my stockpile. Right, let's get a squad assigned to the kitchen. Now I can make these very specific things. I actually want to pause the game for a sec. See, I've got like a bushel of lingonberries and those black mushrooms I harvested earlier came back as a bushel of black fungus. 
Uh, these all can all be cooked into specific things. Like these can be cooked into the crate of lingonberry preserves. There's like a box of jars of jam. And the black cup fungus can um, be made into pickled black cup fungus, right? I, I could do that. Uh, what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to have them make stew. Stew accepts anything as an ingredient. Um, one of anything, in fact. So uh, it'll just be easier for me that I don't have to keep on worrying about balancing various commodities. As I make stew out of whatever you have on hand. Make this a standing order so the kitchen staff will always try to maintain 10 stew in the stockpile at all times. Now I built four ovens in here. Two of them are stone and two of them are, um, well, small ovens and stone ovens. Stone ovens can be made out of the rocks I mine out of the ground here. The stone ovens require finished metal parts, which are kind of in short supply, which is why I made some of them out of stone. Uh, oh, check it out. I have a supply drop. I, um, I'm going to take some food for now, just to be on the safe side. Check it out. There's a new food drop animation. See that? The para-crate. Parachute crate. And uh, they've scattered food all over that hill we started on. The patch notes say that uh, the paracrate will break things it lands on. Now I've had it land on buildings, and it doesn't break bu buildings or modules. So I assume it breaks, if it lands on your stockpile, maybe it'll break some of the stuff in there. I don't really want to test that out, so I'm not going to... Uh, well, I can't really control where the crate lands. Hopefully I don't break too much stuff. Uh, as I was saying, I am now going to build a lower class house, which I'm going to use to house beds for my dirty, dirty colonists. Why am I building it in this shape? No good reason. Maybe just to freak out the wall and ceiling extrusion program. And jam in some beds here. I should do for now. I can always come back and install more later. Get some doors in here. So each of these beds requires one roll of cloth and one plank. Right. So we've got the workshop here, the uh, carpentry workshop, which will turn raw wood into planks. Um, actually, we're running very short on raw wood. Chop down some of these trees. I'm a little bit short on planks as well. So uh, hopefully they'll get to it. And as those goods get made and become usable, um, other workers involved in the construction will grab them out of the stockpile and uh, build these cots with them. Now I start with a limited number of rolls of cloth, like this thing right here, bolt of cloth. Um, but I'm not going to get any more unless I get them through airdrop or something. My other option, if I want to continue building more beds, is to plant uh, flax as a crop, which I believe I'm going to do right now. Here we go. Oh, another new thing is that it is possible to abandon a plot. So you can stop farming if... If you suffer a colonist massacre, for instance, uh, this is a situation when in, in which it might be plausible to stop farming on the plot. It may be that your workforce is, if you lose a lot of guys all at once, it may might happen that um, your workforce is spread too thin over too many projects. And in that case, you may want to abandon a plot because you can, whatever, sustain your smaller population with fewer crops. Now, in order to turn the flax that this plot produces into usable cloth, I need to build a textile workshop. I believe that's what I'll do next. Oh, another thing that finally works is the flatten terrain function. See this red and bumpy area where I can't build anything? Highlight it with orange, 
and it gets turned into a flattened terrain job. You can see free colonists wander over here with their shovels and uh, sh smooth it down. And maybe I'll build our textile workshop there when I get around to it. Right? See this? And that's what the uh, when you read the dev patch notes and stuff. This is what they talk. This is what they mean when they talk about deformable terrain. Anyway, let's not watch a woman dig a hole any longer. Well, it has left an amusing little tuft of ground. Anyway, when they're done, this marker will disappear and the job will be done. And I'll have a nice flat area of land. Actually, I should be a little bit more concerned about food. Oh, and because it's not always explicitly clear, you can rotate the camera with your middle mouse button. Um, currently only rotates in one direction, so, you know, if you overshoot, you have to rotate four more times, or three more times. So, things are being constructed. What do I need next? I think I'll build a chapel, someplace for a vicar to hang out. Let's build a chapel over here. I'm going to make it cathedral shaped. Here we go. Uh, hmm. Fortunately, I picked the wrong kind of symmetry. I won't be able to center this altar. So it is necessary to have a chapel, so you can have a vicar. A vicar... In theory, a vicar is supposed to help prevent the spread of destructive cult thought, in that the vicar has specific jobs, uh, preaching to the colonists, uh, accepting confessions, praying, that sort of thing. Uh, generally, all of which uh, create happy memories, and happy memories help displace uh, sinister thoughts. Right? If we click on a colonist, Got uh, she in this case has an uh, that's a stockpile, right? Rota Golden Chain has a series of memories up to a maximum of eight, I believe. Some of which are happy, some of which are sad. Are you done uh, flattening the terrain yet? So the uh, the chapel can help promote happy memories, unless of course, huh? Well, that's flat enough. Unless, of course, your vicar is corrupted. And if your vicar is corrupted by the evil uh, Eldritch Codge's cosmic powers, she will instead promote the spread of cult ideas. Which, if that's something you want to avoid, that's, um, that's quite unfortunate. Right, what did I say I was going to build here? The textile workshop. See what I was saying about arbitrarily shaped buildings? I can build around these inaccessible red areas. Uh, just a little graphical glitch here where the blueprint foundation is obscured underneath the grass. No big deal. Um, I will get back to this building in a second because I have a bunch of three Fishman Raiders and I have the opportunity to call in another favor. I'm actually going to pass on this as well. Right, let's get back to installing modules in here. So this is the building that will allow me to turn flax into cloth. But no building is a building without a functional door. Which I'm having trouble placing. There we go. We've got fishmen incoming from some... Ah, uh, there we go. He is coming to stab and murder my colonists. And my soldiers, once they have their hands free, will do their best to kill him. J 
jolly good show. It's number two, and uh, I don't know where number three is. So you can area select an area that contains fishmen, and you'll get the opportunity. Uh, the context menu will allow you to butcher fish people, or you can single left, uh, you're supposed to be able to single left click them, I believe. Uh, yep, there we go, and you can butcher them that way. Or you're supposed to. Anyway, I am going to butcher them for their meat. Okay, the textile just completed, textile workshop, and the chapel. So now... Let's get a ch let's get a vicar in here. Say, Mr. Cog, are you a cultist? Oh, you're spiritually inclined. I think you would make a good vicar. So whatever squad I assign here, their overseer becomes the vicar, and their workers become uh, what's the title here? Congregants. That's it. Right, another thing I can do, um, now that these are this the entire field of flax plants has been planted, actually, uh, hold that thought. I'm getting immigrants. What do I need? I'm going to take three of anyone. They've been auto-assigned. One of them was actually a soldier, so he got assigned to my military squad. The other one got assigned to one of these squads. Here we go. You now have an overseer. As I was saying, um, now that this field has been entirely seeded with flax, I'm going to say, uh, after this crop, I want you guys to grow wheat. Right? And they won't uproot the flax or anything. In fact, they'll let it grow to completion and harvest it and everything. Then when they replant, they'll plant wheat. Now, the reason I do that is because um, I'm Experience has shown me I don't. I certainly do not need more than one full harvest of flax. There's only one use for flax, and it's in making beds. Each plant produces enough flax for a bed. Each field holds like 16 plants or something. I am not going to build 16 more beds. Uh, these who are gossiping about cultists. My vicar has enjoyed talking about murder. I think I'm well on my way to have a cultist vicar. Just a little bit concerned about the food situation though. So one thing that's changed with this specific patch is that with the addition of multiple types of immigration, right, uh, prestige favors or call in a favor and your regular immigration waves, um, you will get your colony population could conceivably grow very fast. Um, so practically, uh, my practical experience has been that you'll almost never lack for enough workers now. You may not have enough overseers, although that's not too likely. Um, so now starvation, keeping everyone fed, is a much, uh, is significantly harder, right? It's significantly more important than keeping people alive. There's a constant stream of new new folks coming in, uh, hopefully you can ramp up your food production to match. All right, uh, another new building added in this patch is the laboratory. Um, that's where you do research, and you have scientists and lab assistants, and you build the macroscope there, that's a module, and that's used to research the mysterious artifacts that are... No! Ah, damn it. See, my food stockpile is very, very low, and this fox uh, ate one of the uh, fishman steaks out of it. That's one less meal for my colonists. One way to deal with uh, thieving wildlife is to kill it and turn it into food that you can eat. 
So what I've done here is I've enabled hunting on my military squad because they all already have guns. Now I will highlight this particular animal and I'm going to flag him for hunting. Foxes are cute and I kind of don't want to kill them. Um, but they're going to make my colony starve. Definitely taking the food option. I've planted wheat in the second field, and once this flax crop is harvested, it will also grow wheat. Um, this particular starting area is... Uh, Often there are more forageables. This one's a little bit sparse. But them's the... Them's the breaks, right? And the Empire just drops you off somewhere randomly. I've actually got bushels of fungus and lingonberries still waiting to be... Like, lugged back into town. Uh, so we're actually okay. People will forage now when they're hungry. That's a new behavior introduced in uh, patch 34. If your colonists get hungry enough, they will be finding food will become increasingly important to them, and they will wander off into the forest to find like berries or stuff to eat. Anyway, uh, we've got the foundations of our newest colony up and running. In the interest of keeping this kind of brief, I'm going to pause here. Uh, my name is Alfred. This has been. Gaslamp Games Clockwork Empires, currently version 34 in the uh, early access, available on Steam. Uh, yeah, right, thank you very much for watching, have a good one.